knows about Jinx. He knows that she's going to die. Oh, my God, Miles. Oh, how awful. Well, now, that's strange. What is? You haven't asked me how he knows. Oh, well, I was going to. I... How did he find out? I don't know myself. He just came into my office, point blank, asked me if she had a terminal illness. I refused oh to answer. That was corroboration enough. Oh, my God. Oh, how awful. Nicole, Jinx hadn't told him. I hadn't either. Which leaves me? Does it? Yes. <laughs> it's my fault. Oh, my God. My no. God, Nicole, how could you? I don't know. I don't know. All right, don't start crying at me, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, it wasn't premeditated. I, I know, swear it was. I know that. I mean, I'm not perfect. I can give under pressure, and there's been so much of it lately. All right, stop it. It's done now. Nothing can take it back. And look, I know it wasn't intentional. I know that you, of all people, wouldn't go out of your way to hurt Derek or Jinx or anybody else for that. Oh, I felt so awful. Oh, honey, I felt so guilty ever since it happened. Well, just let it go, will you? Guilt is a luxury. You said you're sorry. For all the good that does. <laughs> What's going to happen? What's Derek going to do? You know, she's dying. How's he going to handle it? did you it? tell him? When the world you get a chance oh, to tell him? No, honey, you don't understand. I didn't tell him. I, I've got to explain it to you. Oh, God, I can't answer that. Will you please answer the phone? Yes, hello. Yes, sir. It's the overseas operator. Draper? Yeah. Well, now, slow down. I can't understand a word you're saying. A baby girl? Beautiful baby girl. Oh, that's wonderful. How's April doing? Oh, that's terrific. Wait, wait a minute. Nicole's here. Let me, let me put her on. It's a new life, Nicole. At least there's a new life in this world. thing for your wedding are really blowing. What the hell took you so long? What are you doing here? Well, you did invite me to come and help celebrate your wedding. Did I say that? You sure did. It's like you got a head start on me. Well, you know, I hate to wait on ceremony, especially weddings. Why don't you open up your gift? It's very nice of you, Tom. You didn't have to do this. Look, this is so pretty. I... Is it for Jinx and me? Well, you bet it is. Well, uh, I'm going to wait and have her open that later. It'll be a surprise for the two of us. God knows I've had enough surprises today. Hey, Chief, are you OK? I've never seen you smash before. I'm not smashed. I'm drunk. And if you will excuse me, I'm going to get a little drunker. And you're going to help me here. You're going to share in a, in a toast to the noble institution, to the you state so? of marriage. State of marriage. <laughs> Here's to you, Chief. State of Alabama. 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 Mm. State of Alaska. 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 Hey, what the hell are you doing anyway? I'm doing it to all the states. Matrimony to Montana. 
Yeah, well, if you keep this up, by the time you get to California, you're gonna be horizontal. Look, everybody's got a right to get half in the bag once in a while. This is my night, all right? Sure they do, but you're about three quarters in the bag. Hey, look, if you wanted to throw a bachelor party, about a hundred guys down at the precinct would have liked to have been here. This is not a party. It's a wake. You know what a wake is, don't you? It's a celebration of death. And you're celebrating the death of your bachelorhood. <sighs> yeah, something like that. Well, you know, maybe you've celebrated just about enough, Chief. <laughs> Get over yourself, huh? Hey, I'm sorry. Well, I guess I better be going. I just want to deliver your uh, present. Where are you going? Oh, I think I'll go see Raven Whitney, see how she's doing. Bet you anything you want to bet she's doing just fine. Yeah, she probably is. Second thought, I think I better stay here. I've been out leaving. Oh, long. go on, go on. I don't need a nursemaid. I can take care of myself. I've been alone half my life. I can be alone now. You know why I'm alone? Just can't seem to hold on to anybody. They just all slip right through my hands. Dear Daddy, would you believe that this is the third time I've tried to write this letter? The third time is the charm, they say. So maybe this is the one I'll be able to finish. I'm sure that when you saw my name on the return address, you thought this is just another one of those unpaid bills. Well, here's the surprise. I'm getting married. And here's a bigger surprise. It isn't an actor. It's a police chief. Yes, your eyes aren't going back on you. I'm about to marry the police chief of Monticello. And in case you're visualizing a man with a thick neck and a black scowl on his face, I'm sending you a picture of Derek. My own darling Derek. Now the hard part. This letter is to invite you to... No. I can't. I just can't. I, I can't write the right words. Wait a minute. Instead of writing, why don't I just call? Why not? What's a little long-distance call between father and daughter? All he can do is hang up. I suppose I should do this collect. Uh, but he'll just refuse the call. It's you, Dorothy. Oh, come on, Daddy. You know I like to be called Jinx. Well, Jinx, Dorothy, whatever. Uh, look, uh, I'm uh, very busy now. Well, I... <sighs> Dorothy, I can only guess that this irritating hesitancy in your voice means that you need money. No, oh. No, no, that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to invite you to a wedding. Now, why the hell would I want to go to a wedding? I was sure you liked weddings. You've had several of your own. Now I'm asking you to my own. Well, frankly, I'm delighted. Now someone else can worry about you charging everything to his accounts. Oh, Daddy, I'm sorry about the coat. Don't think another thing about it. I didn't. Look, I, I was in a peculiar mood at the time. I, I'd been sick. Oh. I can see you've taken a page from your mother's book. It was her favorite excuse for all of her rotten behavior. She was sick. Well, it won't work, Dorothy Jinx. It's an all too familiar refrain. Uh, in any case, I, I hope that you're fully recovered by now. Yes, Daddy, I've never felt better in my life. And I've never been happier. Well, that's the only reason I call. I don't want you to have to worry about me anymore. chance in the world to make it a great relationship and you dump it out the window because you're so busy playing games it's your own fault dummy and now I'm losing the studio 
Jim Peterson, we come bearing news that will that'll... knock you off your feet. Just wait to hear this one. <laughs> All your worries are over. Oh, uh, hi, Sid. Looks like you got some crazies in tow. Oh, it just seems that way, Jim. They're all fired up about an idea, and I think it's going to take a little time to get them back down to earth. Yeah, well, let me try. All right, who's first? Uh, me first. Oh, oh, we have an angel. angel. What? Christmas is over, Mitzi. Oh, no, it isn't. What she means is that we have a financial angel. Guess who is going to help produce our new play? Ta-da! What? What are they saying? Oh, now, don't get me wrong. I, I can't afford to finance any whole big deal, you know what I mean? I, I just want to be, um, investor. That's all. <laughs> You're heaven sent. Oh, look at that stuff out. <laughs> uh, look, I, I, I want to be a part of this. And as it happens, I just got $10,000 in insurance <laughs> money. And, uh, well, it's not doing anybody much good, so I thought I'd like... Like to have some fun with it. <laughs> You're an angel. With or without the money. <laughs> and you know what we're going to do? We're going to incorporate the maskers, and we're going to make you a major shareholder. Uh, simple procedure. I have papers on oh, my no, office. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. That sounds a little rich for my blood. I'd have to hire a limo, uh, wear fancy dresses to stockholders <laughs> meetings. Uh, I don't think I like that idea. Let's, let's keep it simple, huh? I uh, lend you. You owe me. <laughs> This is the most wonderful thing that could ever have happened. You guys, we have an acting company. We have a play. We have $10,000. Nothing can stop us. Except oh. the theater. The only suitable theater in this town is the Whitney. From what you tell me about Raven Whitney, she might not make it available to us. And we don't know how much she's going to charge us for rent. Yeah. That one's a tough cookie. That will not be a stumbling block, let me assure you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have dealt with Raven Whitney, and we have an understanding. Although, right now, she hates my guts. Oh, that's a big help. But that is of no worry. Trust my powers of persuasion. Our play is the thing that Raven's Theater should be sponsoring. I'll see to it. Mr. Tyler. Ah, uh, is the chief expecting you? No, no, not exactly. I was just stopping by. Why, is anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong. You sure? Oh, good Lord, what is it? Is he sick? No, he's just drunk. He's what? I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Uh, well, I, I've never seen him like this before. I think he's just celebrated too much. Obviously. And I think the best thing is to let him sleep it out. Oh, yes, I'll do that and I'll stay with him. Okay. I really don't think I can help anymore, so I'll be taking off. Well, thank you, and I'm very glad Derek has a friend like you. Sure. Look, like I said, this is very uncommon for the chief. He's normally the soberest person I know, and the nicest. Yes, I think so, too. Yeah. By the way, I wanted to uh, congratulate you on your forthcoming marriage. I think you'll be very happy. Well, thank you, and, and thanks again. Good sure. night. Good night. Okay? Well, no, no, not really. What's the matter? Well, I, I just arrived at Derek's apartment and he's laid out on the couch. He's drunk. He's drunk? Yes, he's out like a light and he's very pale and, and I don't think he's breathing right. Look, I, I don't know what to do. I'll be right over. Yes, I do. Apparently, Derek has been celebrating with a little bit too much enthusiasm. Jinx is worried about him. It's not like him to overindulge. So I'll see what I can do. Oh, honey, I feel so terrible. He's drinking because of what he knows. It's all my fault. Cole, please. It wasn't premeditated. I didn't plan it. Don't you understand? All right, you are to blame. You have said it. You have apologized. Now, that's enough. Oh, oh you hate me. I don't blame you. I broke my promise. I don't blame you. You hate me. 
I don't hate you. Come on. I love you. But I've got to say, I've never been so disappointed in anyone in my life. Good evening, Dr. Kavanaugh. Hello, Mrs. Kavanaugh. What are you doing here? Well, don't you remember I promised I'd drop off this report after I finished typing it? Well, that's right. You did say that, didn't you? Yeah. You've also said a number of other things, haven't you? Pardon? This time to the people who would hurt the most. You paid a little visit to Derek Mallory, didn't you? No, no. What stop are... it, Nora. Really, I don't know what... I said stop it! You're lying and you know it. I don't have to stay here and take this, Mrs. Kavanaugh. Oh, yes, you do. You're going to stay here and you're going to listen to me. You are a liar and a troublemaker with your gossiping and your filthy little whispering campaigns. There is nothing uglier that walks on the face of this earth than people like you, Nora Fulton. How dare you talk to me like that? I haven't finished. From the very beginning, that diseased mind of yours has spread its hate and its distrust. You are a walking plague. Nora! I don't know why you've done this cruel thing, but you've had your last chance to hurt me and my family. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Why would I want to hurt you? I don't know. I don't have any idea what your twisted motives might be. And I don't care, but I'm telling you now, you get out of here and you stay out. And don't you ask for my reference unless you get a job in hell. I don't know why you're so hysterical and blaming me. It's not my fault your marriage is on the rocks. Actually, I was wondering if I could have a word with uh, Mrs. Whitney. I'm sorry, Mrs. Whitney went to bed early. She uh, has had a very tiring few days, as you can imagine. Oh, I'm sure that's true. I know it's been very difficult for her. Yes, very. Now, Spencer, now that I'm here, I wonder if I could have a few words with you. All right. Come in, please. Thanks, sir. Nice to get in out of gold. Actually, uh... What I wanted to ask you about is the funeral. I really didn't get to make it there. Well, as you should know, Detective Stoner came by and escorted Mrs. Sachs and Mrs. Whitney to the services. I'm sure they were very grateful for all his help. Yeah, I'm sure they were. So you don't happen to know if uh, Mrs. Whitney has any immediate plans for the future, do you? I would think it would be a bit early for her to have any plans, Detective. But as far as you know, she's not going to leave the city or anything like that. No, I doubt it. Well, I just thought with all the notoriety surrounding her husband's death that she might want to leave town or something. Well, she asked me to hire a maid and a cook, so I would think she intends to stay. Great. Well, uh, you know, it's good to have you back, Spencer. Thank you. Well, I have some other business I have to take care of. Thanks a lot. You might tell Mrs. Whitney for me that I'm going to try to give her a call tomorrow. All right, I'll give you the message. Thank you. Good night. Good night. You've been after her for a long time, Damien. It's clear sailing now. Sonny. Well, do you think he'll be all right? I mean, he is breathing, isn't he? <sighs> is he ever? Well, what shall we do? Not much we can do except let him sleep it off. Listen, I'll put him to bed, then I'll drive you home. Jinx, come on, stop worrying. He'll be okay. Well, look, I, I made some strong coffee. Well, it might help us. Yeah, I could go for a cup. You probably could, too. Yes, at least we'll feel better. All right, old man. Let's try to move it. Oh, Miles. What are you doing here? Jinx called me. Is Jinx here? She's in the kitchen. Miles, I love her so much. Don't let her die. Don't let her die. What the hell do you think you're doing here? Good evening, Spencer. Look, Nora, go away. Go anywhere. I don't want you near this house. The least you can do is let me in for a minute. It's freezing outside. Nora, Mrs. Whitney and Mrs. Saxon are upstairs asleep. I don't want them disturbed. I'm not here to disturb them. I'm here because I've been fired. 
That doesn't surprise me. It, I mean it. I need a job. Well, why don't you go look for one? I want to work here with you. What? I want you to recommend me for a job here in this house. You want me to recommend you? You dream. Oh, you'll recommend me. And highly. Because if you don't, <laughs> I may have to tell Mrs. Whitney that you're the man that murdered her husband. Will outside the edge of night. 